y-axis in blue and a red axis in red. Oh, sorry, an x-axis in red. Um, I can. I don't need to create a new sketch to start with. I can choose the rectangle that I'm going to use as the top. Now, I could choose a two-point rectangle, and I usually would do that, except my screen's frozen. Um, I usually would do that. However, a mid-point um, rectangle is going to be even better. I'm going to failed really early and not because of my skills but because of the program. Here we go. So under sketch there's a whole heap of other options. I'm going to go down to rectangle and if I choose a center point rectangle it means that this whole coffee table can um, start either side of the um, origin which means um, it might be easier for me to mirror different parts later on across mid planes rather than having to create new mid planes. Got some graphics issues because the, the top's gone a little bit funny, but I'm going to draw on the x y axis, which is going to be this one here. So that that plane. Oops. Do that again. So new rectangle. On it should be. Other. Yeah. Why did it go green and red? I don't know. Doesn't matter. So. The rectangle point is going to be in the center because I chose a center point rectangle. I'm going to go down. I can press tab to move between my two dimensions um, rather than having to click on those two boxes. And for this top, I'm going to do 600 by 600. And I can hit enter and then that will um, make that top. And with the mouse, I'm obviously zooming in and out with the scroll wheel. If I'm hovering over a certain corner or a certain point, it'll zoom in on that location. Then I can use the center of my mouse, the, the, the roller, like the scroll wheel, if I click on that, I can pan around if I need to. For some reason, my little view cube um, on the right hand side is, maybe it's actually off the screen. It is off the screen. I'll drag that in a little bit. It's because I'm connected to the projector that it's a bit of an issue. All right, so I'm gonna press stop sketch and we're gonna extrude that. So this one here is called extrude. The other option is using um, push pull, um, but I like the extrude button because that's what we're used to in, in, in Inventor. we go, we're as big as we can be now. And I like to be in a 3D view, so I'm going to go to the home icon up the top so that I can see that in a 3D view um, and I can extrude it in one direction or the other. So I'm going to choose distance there and choose the profile. So I've chosen the square which is the top and I'm going to extrude that um, perhaps up um, 19 millimeters because that's what the board's made of. And we're all probably pretty familiar with this little coffee table. So I'll press OK to that one. Okay. So I've got the top of my coffee table there sitting on that um, that plane. And I drew on the X, Y origin to start with. So when I press the top of my um, U cube, I can see the top of my tabletop. Okay. And that's probably the best way to, to start. I'm going to look underneath it because this is the bottom now. And I'm going to do a new sketch. So this one here is create new sketch. And I can either choose one of the planes like I did earlier, or I can choose one of the surfaces um, of this part. And obviously I'm going to choose the bottom rather than the edges. So I'm choosing the bottom surface there. And for this demo, this isn't the way that I'd draw it if I was going to try and do a final version of my model, but I'm going to draw um, four uh, rectangles that are going to be the legs. And we make the legs out of 70 by 70. So I'm going to say 70, tab 70, enter. And I could do a rectangular pattern of that would be one option. I could just draw one leg and uh, then um, mirror around planes. There's always more than one way of working with CAD. I guess the, the thing that you do is the easiest way for you to understand and edit in the future. Um, so the more experience you've got, perhaps the different option you might take to be able to draw these. I could have rather than put 70 by 70 in each of these and I definitely should have. Um, done this. So rather than put, press 70, 70, I can click once on one corner, press once on the other, not put any dimensions in, and hopefully equals on my keyboard. Does it still do it? Mr. Hunt? No? <laughs> um, I wanted to use some constraints though. Where are constraints? Yeah, but the other constraints? Oh, here, yeah. those constraints. Oh, okay, right. So, on the right hand side, like Mr. Hunter said, the sketch palette's got the options of different constraints. Um, down the very bottom there is one called equal. So, if I click on the equal one, so uh, that's highlighted, I can click on 
um, one line there which is vertical and one line vertical there and you can see it's made those two rectangles the same size or those two lines at least and I can do the same thing with this one um, to be able to get that an equal size which means that if I change the size of this leg that leg would also change which is nice a nice way of working um, trying to find something that's collinear this one here is probably good or I could choose vertical between them but collinear is really nice I could say that this line here is collinear with that one so the two lines are in line with each other. Imagine if they extended the whole way through, they would be in line. So therefore, um, if I make all of these squares in line with each other, I should only have to put four dimensions on from the corner um, to be able to get it sort of fully constrained so that it looks nice and even. So I'm going to say that that's um, 15 mil from that corner, 15 mil from this corner, and I'm just using a, the D command on my keyboard, so press... Um, D on the keyboard, click on the line, the first line, and then click on the second line. And then place the dimension, click once on the dimension to edit it. Well, I wanted me to double click that time. And um, then type the dimension in. So. All right, so they all look like they're fully constrained out to the edges, which is awesome. I can press stop sketch now. Um, e on the keyboard is going to be extrude. If you want to get used to keyboard shortcuts, drop down one of these menus and you can see that it says um, line is L and um, T for trim. And we should be able to see that there's um, E for extrude. So I like to use keyboard shortcuts, so I've pressed E for extrude. I can click on each of those legs, but like I said before, I like to be in a 3D view to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to look at the bottom corner of this, and um, I can click on each of those different squares, which are legs, and they're not going anywhere yet, but if I give them a distance of, who remembers the length of the coffee table leg? 440 sound all right? 410. So 410, press OK. And I've got a little coffee table there. I can use the view cube to be able to navigate around it. Probably the last thing that I'll do for this demo is we'll look at the bottom of it. And you're all pretty familiar with those chamfers that we put on. So we can go modify. And this one here is called chamfer, the second one down. Um, and hopefully I can click on those inside corners. And rather than equal distance, you're pretty familiar. It's two different distances perhaps. And we'll go for one of them 40 mil and the other one... Well, probably 100 mil. Looks like it's a bit too much. Maybe go 120 and only take off 15 there. That looks sort of close, doesn't it? And hopefully, rather than one selected, I can take that off of a number of different edges. So if I choose the selector again there, it doesn't want me to choose more than one. Um, perhaps what you'd need to do is choose all of them first and then um, put the dimensions in. I'm surprised by that. Maybe I'll close that off. Click on that one. Okay. Um, I had to hold down command on my laptop, but it might be control on yours. And I was able to select more than one option um, for that chamfer. So you could go through and do that to every one of the legs, all in one operation. Um, a cool feature of Fusion 360 is you've got a little history bar down the bottom here. So you can grab that little um, arrow and you can um, drag it back and you can see that takes the chamfer off. And if I press play, it'll play through the different steps that I went through. So making the top, making the legs, and then putting the chamfer on. Um, and if I had more parts, it would look sort of even more impressive. So I left that chamfer off. I'm going to go back and try that one more time. So chamfer, holding down command, click on multiple lines and multiple legs. I'm choosing all of the inside legs to put this chamfer on. I can rotate around the view cube to be able to see the remaining ones. And distance one, I think I put about 15 and distance two, about 120. And that looks a little bit like a coffee table. Um, we could make the material options out of wood. You can mess around with that sort of thing. Um, this has got a thicker edge strip on it, so I could do a new sketch on, on top of that surface and fairly quickly, hopefully under sketch, there's one called offset. There's offset there, so I could offset that square out maybe 10 millimetres, maybe 12 millimetres instead. Press OK, and I could extrude 
that outside edge. Remember we made the, the top look a bit thicker by going down maybe um, 20 mil, uh, well 25 even, and the direction's gone the wrong way. So this is a nice thing to be able to note, the direction's gone the wrong that way. I can just press minus 25 instead, and that's looking a fair bit like a coffee table, right? It looks pretty good for that uh, quick demo. Last thing I'm gonna show you is saving, so I can press save there. Um, I'm gonna not put this in my push cart folder, but I'm gonna create a new folder, and you probably can do the same. So I want a new project for this one, and I can call it coffee, coffee table, okay, and um, coffee base, perhaps, and then press save. So that's the coffee table part saved. You can have a go yourself, at perhaps putting a rail in between. In another video demo, I might um, show you how to add extra components in there so we can put the rails in as new components rather than all in one part.